the function p is described by the following properties. Okay, so immediately you should notice it has an x up there at the exponent. So this is an exponential graph. So remember that your exponentials, for example, um, could do something like that or like that or could be flipped over like that or it could even do that. So there's various ways, but it's definitely exponential. And now they tell us that k is bigger than zero. Okay, we'll talk about that. Um, the x-intercept is at two and zero. So let's go plot that. Two and zero is here. So let's put that over there. And then the horizontal asymptotes. Remember that these exponential graphs um, they have these asymptotes, remember the dotted line, and they're telling us that this one is at minus 9, the y is minus 9, so you go down, 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 until y is minus 9, and then there will be a dotted line, so let's put the minus 9 like that, and then there would be an asymptote over there. If you've watched my videos on exponentials, you would know that the dotted line, the asymptote, is also this value over here. So that's really nice because now we have that already. So we can already say that that. We can already say that this is minus 9. The first question, okay, now also another thing, sorry. Um, they, okay, no, we'll get to that. They say write down the range. Now how can we write down the range if we don't even know what the graph looks like? Well, it's actually quite easy. We said that an exponential could go like this, like that, um, like this. It could do a whole bunch of stuff. But we know that this one's going to be somewhere here. Why won't it be underneath the dotted line? Well, because of this point of here. They've told us that there's this point. So, and, and, and the, graph, the graph can never cross over this line. So it has to be somewhere over here. Because if it was underneath then it will never be able to go through that point because it's never allowed to go through here. So the graph is going to be somewhere above the dotted line. Okay, we don't need to know what it looks like because the graph always gets very close to the asymptote. It's either going to, you know, it could do some weird stuff, but it's probably going to do something like this. Okay, but the point is, is that it always gets very close to this dotted line but it never goes over it. So it could do something like that, for example. So when we look at the range, we know that the range is y values. It's the y values. It's the lowest y value to the highest y value. So remember the y value, the lowest one would be here at the dotted line. That would be the lowest point on the graph. And then the highest point, well, that would just keep going up to infinity, but I'll just label it here. As the highest but that's going to go all the way up to infinity and then the lowest point is going to be minus 9. So when we write down the range you could use interval notation where you would go from minus 9. Now this is going to be a round bracket up to let's make that more clear that's a round bracket and then you're going to go all the way up to infinity. Why is it a round bracket? Well it's because this line is a dotted line it's an asymptote and the graph doesn't physically touch minus 9. It just gets very close to minus 9, but it doesn't touch the minus 9. It's not the same as a parabola, okay? The next question says write down, oh and sorry for those of you that prefer interval notation, or sorry uh, set builder notation, you could just say that y is bigger, let me write that a bit better, y is bigger than minus 9. Now the next question says determine the equation of p. Well we only have one more letter that we need to find because remember p of x actually just means y and so y and x we can fill in using a point on the graph because this is a x and this is a y so we can go fill those in like that and then you see we only have k that we need to solve so can you see that this is actually a difference of squares so you would the correct way would be to factorize this as two brackets, k plus 3. I'll show you a different way after this, k minus 3. And then you're going to get two answers, k is 3 or k is minus 3. However, in the beginning here they said k is any number bigger than 0. So it can't be this one. So you can just say na here. Therefore, k 
is 3. Now, what was a different way you could have gone from here? Well, an alternative is that you could have taken the 9 to the left, and then you just would have square rooted. But when you square root, you always have to say plus and minus the square root of that number. So it would be plus and minus 3, and that's why we also got plus and minus 3 over here. Okay, so now we have the equation as p of x equals to the k value and then the minus 9. That is the equation. When you write the equation, you don't fill anything in the x and you don't fill anything over there. That part is only when you're trying to find a missing letter. This question says, sketch the graph of p Show clearly the intercepts with the axes and the asymptotes. Okay, so we've drawn most of it, but we just haven't shown this part over here. We've showed the asymptote, which actually the correct way is to say y equals to negative 9 like that. You'd obviously don't want to say lowest and highest. The teacher will think something's wrong. <laughs> and, then, um, and then we don't need to say x and y over here. Now we just need to go find this point because they said show the intercepts with the axes. That means the x and the y. So to find the y-intercept, what do we do? You make x0. So you take the original equation, which is uh, 3x minus 9, and you make x0 like that. And so that'll end up giving you, um, this actually gives you a 1, and then that'll give you 1 minus 9, which is minus 8. Okay, so that means the x is 0, and the y is minus 8. And that's how you would draw it.